three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome to the Remote Photography Podcast. In this episode, I speak to photographer Gary McIver about his experiences with remote photography. Enjoy the podcast. Cheers, Gary, for doing the podcast. Uh, if people don't know you, just give us a brief history of your time in the industry, please. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, young sir. I'm probably one of the older codgers within the industry. I've actually been shooting um, since I've been 25, so that's 40 years now. A lot of the initial time was um, commercial, which was for the job that I do. So I was shooting black and white in film in really horrible building site type conditions. Studio stuff has probably been the last 12 years. So I've been doing shooting studio with digital for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. Had my own studio now, which is a small 400 square square foot unit in Manchester for the last six. So everything's sat, set up to do both studio work and location work and I run run it from here. A long time with a camera in my hand. The most enjoyable part is the studio work and the work with the, the models. And i got to thank my dear wife for getting me into it because she was the one that bought me the first studio session. There you go. She, she knew how you were going to enjoy photography. She, she did, actually, yeah. I, I was quite surprised because I don't know whether she realised it or not, but it was an introduction to nude photography. Oh, wow. And I, I didn't know. She just, What she did basically said, I bought you this for Christmas. It's a, a, an eight-hour day. Mm -hmm. a, a proper studio and it was called, called edge studio in manchester they're not there now unfortunately yeah. morning great mannequin middle of the floor showed me all the lights set up showed me how to set the lights up and mm -hmm. everything else absolutely great 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 guy um still friendly with him now and then we had some dinner and we sat there chatting away and he had a, an assistant the usual lady assistant as yeah. most of these studio i thought I, I, the, stu the assistant came with the studio so i was most disappointed when i got my own studio and there was no <laughs> way to but anyway, that's, that's an aside mm. and she came and we were sat having dinner and this young lady came in sophie and she was chatting away. i just thought it was a friend with the with the other girl that was there went out after lunch he said right okay you know what you're doing here's all the the setup set your lights up and everything else so i set all my lights up put the mannequin in the middle of the 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 cove, it was a white in infinity cove. Mm -hmm. He said, what are you doing? So I'm putting the mannequin back. So said, no, Sophie. And called Sophie out and Sophie came out with a dressing gown on. Okay. I mean, that's strange. She didn't have a dressing gown on before. And she stood down in the middle of the... She said, you're right now, Gary. She said, yeah. And uh, his assistant had come out because obviously she knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And Sophie then just took the dressing gown off and she was stood there in the nude. And I just... My drawer just dropped. So you got thrown in at the deep end, basically. Oh, bad God. Yeah. yeah and, and they both looked at me and she looked at me and they started laughing like hell. Yeah. Said, said, the look on your face, it was just absolutely classic. But then that's good because obviously yeah. you've experienced this and going forward, you it wouldn't phase you, whereas some other photographers, maybe they'll start doing fashion or whatever and then suddenly they 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 do nude and they don't know where to be looking so it was a fantastic introduction mm -hmm. and it was a great afternoon in that uh, john who was the the professional commercial guy there mm -hmm. actually established some really really good rules in terms of how you work with the models how you talk to the models the look don't mm -hmm. touch yeah to keep the space the neutral space yeah etc etc and it was a fantastic it was a fantastic first day grounding for a first mm -hmm. day shoot and I've carried a lot of them principles right through, right through the years in terms of respect for the girls and ladies that are doing it. Well, that's, that's good, definitely, to be taking it forward. With yeah. um, remote photography, how did you find out about it? Because obviously last year things shut down, you couldn't do in-person shoots. So how did you find out? Was it just um, through Facebook or for Instagram or was it some other form? Um, having the studio, I'd actually done a couple of commercial shoots with with product and fashion and the client insisted on tethering i was used to the concept yeah. of actually the image going on the screen and then having already had that in my mind and i was running with capture one which does tethering a lot it's it's yeah. a commercial piece of software it does tethering properly not like lightroom does it as, a, as an afterthought mm -hmm. or that the canon stuff which is with the eos software yeah. Actually, really, it, it's 
it's an add-on and it's not a, not designed specifically for, for, for tethering. So I was actually quite comfortable with the concept of actually taking the images and seeing them coming up on screens. Helen Wicks, down based down south. Okay, all right. Uh, I've shot with, shot with Helen quite a few times and she actually contacted me and said, I want to try this out. How do you fancy having a go? Okay, no, what we're talking about. I'd heard about it because there obviously there was talk going round about trying to set remote shooting up and with various different people, but nobody had ever act, nobody had actually done it. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about it, and it was a possibility. But well, things aren't going to be that bad because it's only going to be a month here and a month there, and we'll all survive. But then yeah. it became obvious it was going to take a, take people out for a lot longer. Yeah, I, I definitely think that um, first few months, everyone thought, "Oh, by summer, it's going to be over, so we can take a little break." And yeah, yeah, it it was a bit a bit. Let's just wait and see. I think the biggest the biggest problem, and maybe jumping off on a diff, on a tangent here, but the biggest problem for for the photographers is the massive investment that we've made in terms of camera equipment. Mm-hmm. We've spent a hell of a lot of money to get the biggest, the best, the, the great lenses, the good glass, the fast glass, everything to, to make the, the image best. And the model comes to model, and the models are great. They, mm-hmm. they, they actually do what they do in front of the camera. They know how to present themselves great. They know how the light works on them. They know the best way that they look behind the, in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. But always left it with the photographers to do the that's their side of it the creative side of it in terms of the taking the image mm-hmm. actually asking us as photographers to actually give all that lot up give up that seemed like mm-hmm. you were giving all that lot up because you can't use your own camera it appears that you've got no control that you're not you're not sure of what the kit's going to be how is it going to be lit how's it how how are you going to frame it how are you going to control what the model's doing in terms of getting what you want creatively out of the shoe it was all the big question marks that it actually caused a lot of resistance to the remote shoot because you watch the posts, you watch the forums, you yeah, watch yeah. the. I think there was a, a lot of resistance to actually doing remote shoots. So, was it when um, Helen approached you? Did you think, uh, I, I don't want to do it? Or did you think, oh, let's just see how it goes? And then if I like it, I might do another one or two? Quite, I, I actually approached it with the thought, with, with the idea in my head that it's another, it's another um, bit in the bow. Yeah, it's yeah. another part of the, the 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 arsenal of what you can and can't do. Yeah, if it could produce results, and mm-hmm. I, if I could creatively get images that I, I liked and wanted, then whether I was actually there in person or I wasn't in there in person, to me it became sort of irrelevant. So you didn't have that hurdle to go, oh, because I'm not in control of it as much as I used to be. Now, no. now it, it doesn't seem like it's worthy of looking into at least. No, I didn't have that ego hurdle and i think a lot of people have got a problem with and and some still have that issue that because they haven't got the micro control of the mm-hmm. uh, the shoe that they don't want to do it but so, some of those people are the ones that also haven't looked into it maybe and they're just all yeah. no because it looks like like you say the model's in control at the other end it's not my thing but i've seen a few photographers have been like that and then they've done one and suddenly it's clicked in their head of they're saying, oh, why didn't I do this like six months ago? Yeah. And I think it's not reserved just to the photographers either. Mm. I, think, mm. I think a lot of the models have actually sort of stayed away from it yeah. from want of maybe equipment or really do I really want to get involved in something mm-hmm. like this, et cetera, et cetera, because it's not been something that they've been comfortable with and then they do one and then suddenly, mm-hmm. right, wow. Yeah, why the hell am I been doing this for the last six months? Because it's I can still be as creative as I was before, or even more. Uh, there, I mean, with yeah. sets and stuff. So yeah, they can build the sets, they can mm. control the sets, and this perception of lack of control is just rubbish. I was going to say another word then, but I remembered it was a podcast. I'm probably a, an advocate of remote shooting. Yeah. To be honest, I I don't I didn't like the fact I couldn't shoot. I mean, so so few people. Say, oh, you used to do nature photography. You used to do this and you used mm-hmm. to do that. You used to do the other. The, prime mover on that is i used to yeah the photography that i like doing is a photography that i do and just so oh because i can't do that i'll just go and back and and, and try to it yeah i did try it i mean i, I went and set the camera up no I'll, I'll go and do some wildlife photography i'll do some macro photography i'll do this and that i'll even go and stay in the studio because i've got the studio yeah and i'll do some slow motion stuff or i'll do i'll go back and do product software and photography and stuff like that which yeah, so you're just keeping your mind being creative as well. Even with all of that as a distraction, and I'm probably luckier than a lot of photographers, I have got the ability to have that distraction. Mm-hmm. 
and I, with all the kit and the equipment and everything else that I've got, I'm still drawn back to wanting to shoot models. people. I deferred from that model. Yeah, people. Um, yeah, it does. It does people. have to be models. It could be people. It yeah, could, it yeah. could be people. It can be. It can be. Yeah, it's it's people, not models. Yeah. Well, I, they're, I, yeah, they're, they're people as well, but they're I, real people. Yeah. yeah, everybody's people. So yeah. I like to shoot. I like to shoot people, mm -hmm. and I like to shoot stories, and I like storyline. I like I like storylines mm -hmm. in terms of building. I'm, I'm, you might shoot the story in reverse. You might mm -hmm. shoot a hell of a load of random images, and then when I'm going through them after, mm -hmm. I'll build them into a story, mm -hmm. and the people will come back to you me after and say, "We well, didn't say you were doing that." I said, "I didn't know I was doing that till afterwards." Yeah, because some of the models you've worked with, speaking of uh, story, I'm looking at your um, pictures, say, like Kira Lavelle. There, yeah. there, there's a person that you know, if you give her a, an outline, she's going to do a story for you or at least give yeah. you the poses where you can make a story from it. From Kira, the ones I've published already are just laying the foundation of about four or five storylines. That's going to watch this space. That's going to, that was, I know Kira is probably exceptionally creative and yeah. a massive, massive bundle of energy. Yeah. But that the four-hour shoot that I did with her, I was left bloody laminated. Yeah, because you, 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 your your brain's more focused because you're focusing on the software and stuff, and like you don't realise when you're in person, you're just pressing a button. We're here, you're pressing a button, but you're looking around the frame, making sure she's yeah. in frame as well. So yeah, you suddenly realise you've been focusing for four hours and you feel tired. It's a lot more intensive in terms of. I actually set reminders for me on the screen about taking breaks. Yeah, because it's not fair on the it, person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it because. When you're doing it in person, it's it, there's a natural break. Yeah, because you might download the pictures and stuff. So when a model changes yeah. outfit, uh, yeah, or, or, or you hey, take a breather. I want to change this. I want to change that. Yeah. Or I want to move this light here. I want to move that line there. There's a natural oh, where everybody mm -hmm. just stops for a minute. But with the remote stuff, if you're not careful, you can be a total unfair person. <laughs> that took you, a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I see you were like. I'm going to say something, but I'm not going to say something. <laughs> I'm not going to say yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and and actually, you look look at the timing on the yeah. on the on the what, and that's been twenty minutes, and mm. we've not stopped, mm. and that's unfair. So uh, we've mentioned Kira already. Who else have you shot with so far? Uh, Donna Rian, and then Scarlet Rose. That was that was a totally awesome shoot with Scarlet. That yeah, was... I, I did one with Scarlet. I wish I'd done more, but yeah, that yeah, was I... that's literally one room, and she builds her own sets as well. Yeah, <sighs> it was. Yeah so so productive and the the ideas were just bouncing all over mm -hmm. the place and most of the most of the people i've done remote shoots with mm -hmm. i've shot in person with as well yeah so you've already got that um shorthand with them we've got shorthand we've got understanding they know mm -hmm. what i like to shoot and i know how they like to shoot mm -hmm. so it it makes a difference stephanie stephanie, stephanie Dubois, Dubois. ellie j i've actually had two shoots with ellie I had one and it was really good because she's one person that not for any reason, it's just when I was shooting in person, I might not have for one reason another shot with her. But when it was like remote, it was like, oh, okay. I specifically said to myself, let me shoot with people that most of the time I've not shot with. Maybe it's with people who are just starting out that I have shot with, say like Itemus, that maybe I can, from my experience, help them see if they like to do the shoots or not. And like even with Stephanie Dubois, we, we'd shot a few times in person and now she even told me the other day, it was like, we've shot more remotely than we have in person and it, it suddenly clicked with me. It's like, oh, we have. Yeah, we have. So I've had a really good working relationship with Steph. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've shot quite a few times. I think, I think even with a rough count in my head, it's got to be eight or nine times. Okay. And who else have you shot with? Is there any people that you've shot with that you hadn't shot already yeah, well, in person? Well, yeah, Ellie J I'd never shot with before. Yeah. And I had the first shoot with her. Mm -hmm. And then after, ha after having that first shoot, there was a load of other ideas that I thought we could go down. Mm -hmm. So I set up another shoot. Okay. So, I, so I, I've done two shoots now with Ellie. Mm -hmm. And there's still a load of stuff that, we've, that I've got bouncing around in my head that I want to do with her. But she actually actually took a rest over Christmas and only, has only just come back into it. That's going to be probably March or March or April by the time I can, with work and everything else, I can get around to that. Sure, yeah, because you, you're having to fit it in with what you're doing and yeah. the with, time with and space. Yeah. Time and space, yeah. Uh, Helen Wicks, four remote shoots with her. That was, the first one was, as we said at the beginning, was just a, that was the very first one that I did. But after that, the other three were specifically themed and... That was exploring the probably the 
The darker side in terms of natural light, but not a lot of light. All natural, more more or less natural light shoots, mm -hmm. but dealing with pretty low light situations. So you weren't letting the fact that it was a remote shoot affect how you shot. You were like, okay, it, it's the camera, so I can change the setting. So just because I'm not in the room, it's, yeah. it, it's not letting you think I can't do that. You were just going to let, let's see if this works. Let it see if it works. The, the, the standard... The easy setup with with remotes is have you got a couple of LEDs? Yeah, we'll slap the LEDs or a ring light on, mm -hmm. and we'll just keep the light the same, and we'll do some posing. I'd, I'd rather challenge myself in terms of the technicalities of it and see what we can gain in terms of images. Um, maybe reverse where the norms. And is there anyone else you've worked with or not worked yeah, uh, with? Kate Laura. That's actually three times when I look back. I was quite surprised about that. Yeah, because she she was like really really jumped into it in the beginning. Yeah. I, think, I think that helped her. But awesome. I mean, mm. I, again, the first the first shoot I'd never shot with her before. Mm. And it was a little bit a bit, bit tentative. And, oh, and you, you both probably would be. It's like it's something new. So when you do something new, you're gonna yeah. not sure how it's gonna come out. Didn't know the lady, and mm. obviously once you get to know get to know them a little bit, you could actually then get your head around where you wanted to go. Yeah, Artemis Fauna mm -hmm. has been one shoot. I think you, you met. I think I shot Artemis the day or the day after you. It might have been the day after. I think yeah. Um, again. Wildly, wildly creative. Mm -hmm. um, all sorts of ideas in the head, but you can still put your own twists on it. Yeah, which which works real. And again, it helps a lot again with with Artemis. So we've got quite a, a background, a lot of information in terms of how we both like to shoot. Yeah, because I think with Artemis, once you give her maybe like a mood board or something, she just is on it. Yeah, she, she'll build set, she'll do outfits, she'll do makeup. It's like mm. so, like Kira as well, and well, I would say everyone who's doing mutts is like they've really jumped on them. The ideas of doing sets and outfits just to make it more creative for them as well. The whole attitude towards remote shooting. Let's be honest, John, the remote, the attitude has changed totally mm -hmm. pre Christmas. Yeah. Post Christmas, you look at how people were thinking about remote shooting pre Christmas and then post a lot of the models that were hanging back and not knowing whether they were going to get involved or not. I've actually said no, yeah. I think because of the what was it, the third lockdown starting in December, yeah. so, yeah. some, some yeah. people suddenly thought, Oh, this is going to go on a bit longer than we thought. And li literally, I would think Je the month of January, we, you, we were just seeing uh, remote posts left, right, and center from people who hadn't been doing yeah. it before. It was a pre 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 Christmas. There was a lot of people posting what I didn't consider remote shoots, where they were going to shoot photographs on an iPhone yeah, or shoot yeah. photographs on mm -hmm. on this. Or give us a theme, and I'll shoot a load of images, mm -hmm. and then you can process them. Well, mm -hmm. any photographer who's been around for any reasonable amount of years has got that much of a bank of images that they've never processed. Yeah, they yeah. don't need anybody else to give them. More more images i think i think i could carry on processing for another six years without oh yeah we, we, it never ends we think it is and then we realize we've got pictures from like six or seven years ago that we maybe did one or two and then it's like oh yeah. now i've got no excuse to do them so I, I thought with the lockdown and everything else i'd have a more chance i'll be able to get rid of my backlog i'll be able to actually go back to never happened never 2016 happened. 17 and actually bring some images through yeah. it's 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 not happened is there models that um obviously you've, you've done what uh, how many remote shoots have you done you must be in double figures by now 14 14 yeah yeah so is there any that you've not worked with say be the uk european or any other country to be that you'd think um, you'd like to in the future i looked at a couple of the um i've got to admit i'm probably a little bit of a type bugger uh, <laughs> aren't, I, I aren't, at... aren't all photographers Probably are, apart from when it comes to kit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But I, I did actually have some conversations with a couple of the Canadian models and the American models and a couple of models over in uh, Australia. But the rates didn't... They weren't that special to warrant nearly double the rate that I've paid for somebody in England. And I struggled with it a little bit. I yeah, thought, but to be to is that it's like the currency conversion as well is that yeah. would that would be the normal rate in that country, but for us it's I, more expensive than it is. I, I'm I'm well aware of the currency differential because I regularly correspond on on a couple of forums with a couple of American photographers, mm -hmm. and um, I speak with a guy called Steve Wong who's in Australia, who's based in Sydney, and Swiss-based photographer Dan Hostler. Letter he'll know yeah, that yeah, I, I always know, call. Yeah, yeah. And if I've done it wrong, Dan, sorry. <laughs> but he's based in Prague, 
Uh-huh. So and there's a couple, uh, Ivana Kremakov, okay. who I've shot, shot with over there, and Dominica, and she has a sister as well. And I do apologise because I can't remember her sister's name. But I have shot with them, and I know what their rates are. They are absolutely horrified by the rates in England. I guess, so, I guess it's a, d- a different, um, I, I don't want to say culture, it's, it's a different um, industry. The industry's found a level over here where mm. for, mo- for models, if they were to come and shoot here, they, they would be like, you're charging that low? But yeah. for, for, for us, like we, we know what the industry standard is, so there may be some that charge slightly more, but obviously they've got the experience that they've, be, they've been doing it for a few years where they can provide, say, like they, even if they do photography as well, they know settings, they know lighting, and so they can help as well, which that I understand. But, yeah, I, I think it's just because us as a country, the industry has found a certain level, and then with currency changing and stuff like that, it just seems really, really expensive. Shot with Mishka. Yeah. Scott, before, I'd love to shoot with Mishka again, because that's, a, that's an awesome model. Yeah, yeah. So that that's... And I've contacted Ivana. Um, she's not... Because... Again, I really enjoyed the shoot I had with her, mm-hmm. and she's actually not doing remote shoots at the moment, so mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. But other than that, I think there's plenty of people within. It. I mean, I'm shooting next week with Rochelle Summers. Yeah, because she she was she like you say she was um, one of those ones. It was like, will it work for me? Will mm-hmm. it won't? Yeah. And it, and then she she did like we did a test one with her, and it's it's only clicked with her. When uh, booking a model, do you take into account their setup, or is it more the person you'd like to work with rather than what gear they have to do remotes? It's more the person, mm-hmm. and depend, and then we'll make make it work with whatever gear they've got. I'd probably take exception if they turned around and said they wanted to shoot it on an iPhone, but uh, as long as you've got a camera that would take relatively... I mean, to, let's, let's be realistic, and let, let's not be too gear snobbish. Yeah. I, I can on 400D or an entry-level... And forgive me, I can't remember the entry-level Nikon codes yeah. because I'm not a Nikon person, but an, an entry-level Canon 400D will take a de- decent image as long as you're not... As long as you realise the limitations of the camera. A yeah. kit lens will yeah. take a de- decent image as mm. long as you know you're dealing with that kit lens. You don't need to have the best of, of the best of the best. Yeah, you, exactly. You, you just need to work with, to be honest, what you've got and be creative about it. So, mm. no, it's the model first. Do I want to shoot with a model? Mm-hmm. Can that model or person actually come up with or work with me on the kind of thing that I like to take images with? Or can they actually push me creatively to generate something that I haven't done before? Mm-hmm. That's a judgment call. And it's to be fair, I make I don't make any different judgment calls for remote than if I was shooting in person. Yeah, that's good. So you're not letting the fact that a remote shoot dictate how you're going to if you're going to book a model... Not even, again, a lot of people are kicking up about, well, why should the rates be the same? Well, yeah. why shouldn't the rates be the same? Yeah, because the models are doing... They're literally they're doing they're lighting, they're doing set dressing, so... So I don't have an issue with the rates, yeah. as long as they're not silly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more the person rather than the amount of kit that they've got that would attract me to do a shoot with them. That's good. It, it's, it's, uh, it's not like a trick question. I, I'm just interested to hear people's thoughts when... That maybe like the first time they're doing it, does the kit come into effect, or is it no? I've I want to work with this model. It doesn't matter what camera they have, as long as it I can get raw files at the end. Then it doesn't matter that it's not an in-person shoot or a remote. I want to work with this model. Personal opinion, and mm-hmm. might not be received well in some some parts because, but then again, it's my opinion. You're a photographer. You're used to using kit. You're used to using that kit to produce what you want creatively. We haven't always owned 3,000 to 4,000 pound cameras with thousands of pounds with a lens hanging off the end of it. It isn't the size of your camera that matters, it's the way that you use it. Yeah, it's the the person using the camera, not the camera. So the fact that at the other end of the line isn't the latest piece of camera kit, the fact that you don't produce some decent creative images or a decent creative shoot is not the camera's fault, it's yours. That's a good point, yeah. With remote shooting, are you finding it's limiting your creative style or do you think, oh, because of the limitations, you're being more creative with your shoots than maybe you would do in person? That's a difficult one, that, because would I have the same ideas if the person was coming to the studio or we were going out uh, on location? Because I know by the nature of what we're doing remotely, we are relatively in one or two fixed locations. Yeah. 
because the setup and everything else has got to be within the purview of the model. We, you've got quite a bit of kit hanging off the end of the camera, so you can control it. So I think the nature of the remote shoe makes it a challenge creatively to make something different within a pretty restricted space or a pretty restricted viewpoint. And I enjoy that challenge, to be honest, and just to see what we can what we can create. No. You can move about about in a limited way yeah. but you're not going to have the same kind of freedom as you oh right I'm, i've just changed my mind on what i want to do so what i'll do i'll throw away all them diffusers and that box and that spot box and that and that piece of kit that gritty stuff yeah. and we'll throw something else in there and see what happens the answer to the question is you've got to be a little bit more scientific in your approach okay to to a remote shoot in terms of understanding the space and understanding what you can get out of that space with the light and maybe relying a little bit more on post-processing because you've got the flexibility of all your different lights and your different setups and different angles and you're able to move something or you're able to do a half step to the left and then another half step here or move in or move out a little bit you're not able to do that so you need to maybe think more of how you when you're taking the images how they how the what the cropability of it is yeah. how you gonna have because you're gonna have you're shooting in a, a non-studio environment so you have to be very very careful of what's happening on the peripheries or be prepared to do a hell of a lot of getting rid of yeah. on cloning i do tend to find sometimes with the when you come back to the images oh shit i didn't notice that or i didn't notice that or i didn't mm. notice that and then you're left with a choice where do we leave it in because it's a remote shoe? Does it add to the picture? Does it add to the image? Does it not add to the image? Does it stop what I'm trying to portray there? Yeah. And there, there is more of a, of a battle post-processing in terms of making the image work the way you want it to. So if you just want to do a remote shoe, chuck a, a standard couple of filters on it and walk away from it, I think you're going to be disappointed. Do you, because obviously you've done photography for years and years, did you always use to look in the frame and make sure everything was done in camera? Or do you think with uh, remote shoots, because now you're more, more focused on the frame, you're going to take that back to when you do in-person shoots that you'll be looking around the frame to make sure everything in camera's fine, there's no wires or anything in the way? I, I tended to be, be a little bit anal in terms of that. If I did notice something within the frame, I would always get rid of it. I'd rather have a clean shoot. So you already had that when you were doing in-person, you would make sure... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's more from the, to be fair, that comes from my initial camera film days in that I was doing a hell of a lot of commercial stuff. And you didn't, you didn't want to waste frames. Yeah. I couldn't waste frame, I couldn't waste film, and a lot of the buildings I was taking photographs of, it was a one-off access. So if I made a mistake, I couldn't go back. So I had to be very, very precise in and make sure that what was in my... I don't even know if you're old enough to remember the... Oh, no, I remember film, and to, to be fair, I, I'm looking into... When we do get back to doing uh, in-person shoots, maybe shooting on film because it's something that, okay, with digital, I'm totally fine. But now because I'm comfortable with shooting digital, yeah. I, I, so I maybe want to shoot on film where it's like now, like yourself at the beginning, you have to make sure everything's right. Otherwise, you could get the pictures back and it's like there's 16 frames of just um, you've overexposed it and there's nothing there. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. you wasted it. Yeah. it it's got, and you don't know. Yeah. And until you you paid to have them processed and, and got them back, mm. you you you're either going to be very highly pleased or totally mm. wiped out with it. And I got sick and tired of waiting for it to come back, which is why I got I had a, my own little dark room in the house for a mm. while and used to do the the black and whites mm. on on my own, mm. which was great fun. And then digital uh, came along and did it all. Yeah. Um... Then, then it was just all waste kit. With um, when you're approaching a model, do you? Um... Just send them an email, do you do like mood boards or you just have a general idea and shoot that idea to the model and see what she can do? Because you say you do themes or stories to your pictures. How do you go about getting that across to the model? Mainly because it depends whether... I think the, 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 the starting criteria is have a shot with the model before or is it a brand new model? If it's a, somebody I've not shot with before, I will I will do mood boards. I'll, I'll make the initial email contact, I'd love to shoot with you... Mm -hmm. um, what your rates, all, all the usual stuff that you that, that, you, that you go through. Yeah. When are you available? Um, what kind of length of shoot do you want to do? So just get a, get a general feel for it. Obviously, if they're on 
one of the variety of many, many e modeling sites. Have a look on there, see what the general style and na nature of what they like to do. Understand the levels, which is always important. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we know where, where, where and what, you, what you, you're talking about. And then that will give me some kind of idea. I never generally look for a model to fit an idea. Right. I, it tends to be that I find a, a model person that I want to shoot with and then I let an I ideas come from what I've got in my own, going on in my own head yeah. and what I see on their ports. So let's take an example we've talked to her before, like Kira, because obviously Kira is one of those models. You give her an idea and she just runs with it. How did you come up with the idea? Because, say, I'm looking at the ones where she's posing on in in the kitchen. How? Yeah. What was the idea for that? The, the idea, the idea was that was seventies, eighties, part glam. Okay. Shots where there was a hell of a lot of stuff in in Vogue and the other magazines where there was a really glamorous person yeah. in the kitchen because you're a woman. Right. But you're obviously not there to do anything in reality because you're that glammed up that you're not going to do it. You're not going to be cooking in what you're yeah. wearing. And that was a general idea for that part of the shoot. And then Kira took that on board and said, right, I'll be clamped. If you don't want me to be actually be cooking or anything or, or mm. be domesticated, I'll take it to the extreme where I'm clambering all over the units and I've, I've got an outfit on that allows me to, to do that. Yeah. And we'll just go as wild and wacky as we as we can. Yeah, so you, you you've like laid the base of what you'd like to do, and she's just added more on top yeah. to, yeah. Because even even looking at your shots now, I see like you you don't even mind putting up like an outtake of like Kira crossing her eyes and stuff, which just means you're like enjoying the the process. There's a lot more development on that yet. There's a whole series of Kira ah. just pull some crazy faces. Ah, see, I see. I thought there was an outtake. I didn't. I didn't realize. No, no, that's not. That's that's a deliberate image. Ah. And wait till you see the, the continuing knife sequence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, at the end of it, mean, I'll, I'll go back into history. I mean, I've, obviously I've shot with Kira before. And I shot, uh, there was a, with her and Renaissance. And really, it was one of the times that I turned, we tur I turned up without a, a massive plan. Because then I, I didn't know Kira and I didn't know Renaissance, but through another photographer, Paul Pierce, mm -hmm. he said, you really need to shoot with, renaissance because she's a fantastic model so okay paul thanks and this opportunity came up for a half day okay and really the whole shoot had no idea but it developed into probably one of the most awesome theme shoots that we've ever done in terms of they were a couple mm -hmm. they were really nice to one another they then suspected that one of them was playing around with somebody else and they were arguing over the computer and getting the computer I think that was one of the things that really cemented my doing a photo shoot to a story. I'd done it before mm -hmm. and it had worked quite well, but that actual session was one that said, mm -hmm. yeah, have an idea yeah, and then let it grow through the shoot. You have a story in mind. How many on average um, shots, say when you're in person to being in remotes, do you find you do less shots remotely because you're trying to get that quality? Or do you find you're shooting the same amount as you would do in person? I tend to shoot medium pace anyway. Right. So I probably that one. I'll go back to that Kira shoot. We seem to be going back to that, but that. No, no, yeah, but that's a good example. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good example. That was a four-hour remote shoot. Right. And we actually shot too much because we kept on saying we need to stop and have a bit of a rest. Mm -hmm. um, but we ended up with seven hundred frames. Okay. The, the, Which was yeah, it, it's like for a normal shoot. Yeah, yeah, it's normal shoot. And yeah. I've just I actually finished one the other night, and that was three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, that ended up with about three four hundred frames. I tend to what I tend to even though it's a slower, it is a slower play. Yeah, it is a slower pace, but I tend to overshoot what I want because no matter how good the connections and everything else are, there is mm -hmm. a lag between you pressing the shutter and you capturing the image. Exactly, yeah. So you, you're always a little bit surprised with what you're getting because it's mm. never what you press the space mm. bar on. So I, I tend to shoot, I tend to frame what I'm after. Right. And so you, so, shoot, you shoot a few more just to be on the safe side? I, I shoot a few more so I can, so somewhere within the, the bank of three or four yep. will be the image that I'd visualise for what was going on. It allows for 
bit of a movement. It allows for the fact that, to be honest, it's very, very difficult for the people that you're shooting to actually slow down. Yeah. And it's 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 not a criticism. It isn't a criticism mm-hmm. because that's the way we are. But because when you're on the shoot, things start, you, the, the poses and everything else yeah. start to flow yeah. and they start to go from one to the other. And that, at times, is too fast for remote. Yeah. You, you see an awesome image and it's gone before you have a chance to capture it. Yeah, because the live view is not updated. and No, the live is not fast enough. Yeah. And, and, I, and I don't think... And that's actually a challenge, mm-hmm. a feature, and an annoyance all in one. I, I can see that, yeah. Accept it for, for a challenge because yeah. you need to be aware of the fact you've got a bit of a lag. So you need to be a little bit more preemptive in mm-hmm. terms of what's, what's going to happen. You need to accept it as a, a problem because mm-hmm. it is a problem uh, in that you might not get the image that you want and you've got to accept it as, a, as, as something that maybe adds a little bit of spice to what you're doing as well because mm-hmm. you're going to might capture the an image that you didn't see but where go oh wow i didn't see that but that's awesome i, I wish i'd have thought about that one but i'll claim it as mine anyway because it's coming out of my camera yeah because I, i've definitely had it you've had what you get happy little accidents where oh, yeah. maybe maybe because of the delay, you've suddenly seen the shot and the model's already there and you click and then you get that shot, which is better than the one you'd planned for. So, yeah, but I, you, You've just expressed it perfectly. I'm, I may not have, I may have rambled a bit, but you said it a lot more succinctly than I did. Yeah, agree. Now that you've done a few remote shoots, do you find, because I, I believe you're in like the Facebook groups that have uh, sprouted up over the last few months, do you find yeah. it's... Um, one, it's easier for you to display your work there. Obviously, it's Facebook, so you can't show art nude stuff. But say you've put stuff up there, do you find it's easier for you to see models that are doing remotes and to display your work, and then that goes in a circle where models want to shoot with you? Difficult answer to that one. Okay. Because I think it's a, it, it, it's very much a double-edged sword in that I'm probably a little bit finicky who I, who I shoot with. I'd much rather... Have make an approach to them to a person rather than that person trying to push themselves on me as the best thing since sliced bread. Okay. Um, so I, I I do tend to be a little bit negative about these floods of every time you put some images up, mm-hmm. you then get loads of people coming back and saying, "Oh, I'd love to shoot with you. I'd love to do this with you. I'd love to do that with you." Right. And and you look at them, look at the person, and think you're not the kind of image or the or, or within the kind of genre that I'm really interested in. Right. And so you're actually just emailing me because you've seen that I'm in, in the group mm-hmm. and that I'm actually active in doing the remote shoot. So you prefer to be the one who like you like you say you with you, you have a story in mind and you think, oh okay maybe Artemis or Kate or Kira would fit that. So you, you would approach those models rather than a model approaches you and then you're trying to fit it in with the story you want to do? Yeah. I, I mean, it, don't, don't get me wrong. If somebody approached me that I looked then at the who I, who I didn't know yeah. and then looked at the portfolio and I looked at what they did and then I'd say, yeah, hmm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'd love you, to work. You, you're open to working with them. If yeah, I'm, I'm, them. Not, I'm yeah. not trying to just say the only people I work with are the people that I've worked with. Yeah, because that's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never, I'd never have worked with anybody at all if I'd, if I'd have taken that, <laughs> that that attitude. Yeah, but I do tend to be a little bit resistant to people who who are very very pushy and want who seem to think that you want to shoot with them just because they've sent you a Facebook message. Right, um, and that will probably turn me off a little bit. Okay, in, and 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 I'd put a little bit of a you'd have to work a lot harder. <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's a valid point. It's like I I know obviously models have to find work, so they will send their yeah. emails and stuff. But I know, like you say, you you'll have a story in mind, and then you think, oh, okay, maybe these three four models would work. But then maybe a fifth model m- messages you, and then you suddenly realise, oh, she might mm. work for that theme as well. So you're open to working with a new model, but yeah. but but you're um, more. Um, you have the story in mind and, and you have the models in mind, so you tend to stick to that. But like I've said before, you're open to working. With, if the model messaged you and you suddenly go, oh, I didn't think she she was doing remotes, but suddenly it's, oh, that might work, so there's another option available. 
Yeah, it's a, as I say, it's a double-edged sword on that kind of that, yeah. that on that question. It seems like I'm being a bit remote for remote shoots. See what but, you did there. Yeah, it could. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, yeah, I want to know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, if I don't know what's going on, I can't make a decision. Mm. So yeah, I'm interested in the in the general. Life. If if somebody's got an event or somebody's got an idea and mm. that, that, that they want to pursue, mm. then I'm happy to actually think about it and see whether or not I can work with it. Mm. Well, it's, it's, I, do, yeah. I do I do not I do not respond very well to pressure selling selling. Okay, that, 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 that's fair. It's like it, everyone's different. So you're totally in in your yeah you 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 have your point of view and you're totally. You can follow that example. Yeah, it's my money. Yeah, being pedantic, it's my money, mm-hmm. my time, my choice. Okay. And if that sounds like I'm being a bit of a bum, then I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. No, I, I, it, it's a, it's a, it's a fair point, and you've put it across. With remote photography, when we get back to shooting in person, do you see remote photography still being around? That is something a model could offer. Say like she's doing an event or she's doing a tour, or do you see that it's going to go back to maybe being a niche thing? Right, I think again I'll, I'll answer this in 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 two parts because my actual views changed. Okay, if you'd have asked me that question pre Christmas, I'd have said that it was purely a niche thing with a, a very limited lifespan um, that would be overtaken by the. Um, oodles and oodles of personal contact time that people wanted with with people and doing the shoots and missing the social side and aspects of it. And don't get me wrong, I really hate not having the so. I, I I love the shooting, but I love the social side to it as well. Yeah, you love catching up with, say, like a mod you've shot several times, just catching yeah. up after a little while. I'll get into know a person I've not shot before. Yeah, and I'm I'm never. I love the fact that. A, a person that you don't you don't know very very well at all has the actual confidence to come and shoot with you, and that that shoot for the first time could actually be to nude. Yeah, and they're giving you that trust, and obviously they're taking references and they're checking up yeah, on you, course, yeah. and everything yeah. else. But they're still coming and having that confidence in you that you treat them with respect, and you actually get friendly with that person. You get to know them as a person. I love that aspect of it. I'm, I'm a social animal as much as anybody else is. Yeah. And I believe that that was the all swaying principle pre-Christmas in terms of where things were going to go. Right. Post-Christmas, maybe I've got a bit used to this apocalyptic existence. <laughs> I think uh, we all have in the last year. Yeah. We're, we're all sort of getting used to being on our own yeah, and getting used to the lesser part of social contact. Mm-hmm. And in reality, the next six to nine months is still going to be very limited social contact. Yeah. Very limited. That's just me making a prophecy. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong or indifferent about it, but I don't feel confident in myself to suddenly say in three months' time I'm going to go back to where I was in terms of the all-out social contact with people. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, the more I do the remote shooting, mm-hmm the more I find it a good social experience as well. I don't find it, it's it's an exclusive experience or you're, you're excluding mm-hmm. people. It's more, it's still a getting to know people. It's still a social exercise. It's mm-hmm. still a making friends with people and, and working and making. So in terms of remote shooting, remote shooting has just become another form of shooting. Exactly, yeah. It's location shooting. It's studio shooting. It's event shooting. It's remote shooting. And it's it, and it has I, I think now it has the same level of significance as any other type of shoe. So will it still be here in six months' time? Yeah. Will it still be here in twelve months' time? Of course it will. Will it still be here in eighteen months' time? How the hell do we know? We don't even know if we're going to be here in eighteen months' time. That's but right. <laughs> I think the reality of it becoming an established genre is here, and I think a lot enough people have actually bought into it mm-hmm. to actually not make it a niche thing anymore that's a really good answer because I, I think a lot of people are thinking oh, as soon as they get back to um in-person shooting it's just going to be maybe something they can offer on the side but maybe it's something where maybe they work during the week for doing in-person shoots and maybe the weekend they'll do like one or two 
remote shoots because it's something they can do even on their days off if they're if they're modeling so a lot of the the, the, the people have invested now some mm. quite heavily yeah. in kit they're not gonna they're not gonna want to pack that kit away and not use it exactly yeah um and for me in terms of um i'm quite happy to shoot in person I, I did it. I travelled. I've travelled all over the country to have shoots because I was travelling for work all over the country. I was quite used to having nights out in, in hotels and everything else because that's the way that I lived. If I can shoot people in the studio, which is great, which is what I like to do in on location, great. Go to events, great. If I can then actually turn around and say, well, I don't have to spend eight hours travelling to go and shoot somebody down in in in, in Essex yeah. who I really want to shoot. Yeah. They've got remote shoot capability. You make the make the appointment, you shoot with them, you get actually to to shoot that person, mm -hmm. whereas you wouldn't have done before because the economics of it just ain't worth it. Yeah, that, that's a that's a valid point as well. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy to to make, as I said at the part, part one of the question, mm -hmm. the genre is here to stay because people have invested enough money in it. Now, yeah. it, it had to get past a critical point. Yeah. Whereas the critical point was photographers are sat there saying you can you can off. I've invested X thousands of pounds in my kit. Yeah. Therefore, I'm not going to just sit here and press a button on a computer mm. because that's not me being creative. Well, you're wrong. It is. Mm. But that's your opinion. So you, you're you welcome to it. But the, the actual investment in, in time and learning and getting over the hit hump was with the models. Mm. They've done it. Yeah, and did you think that critical mess was like what just before Christmas or? Yeah, it was after? building up to Christmas, yeah. and then after Christmas, it, it sort of said, "Well, what do you what? Well, uh, well, you know, what do you want for Christmas? Well, I'd love a camera yeah. because with a camera and a couple of lights, I yeah. can suddenly start earning money again." Yeah, they, they could pay for the camera straight away, and then yeah, the, the people the people who pioneered this from April, May, June last year mm -hmm. have led the way to, to, to for the everybody else to be able to now step in no step in's the wrong word mm -hmm. to, to to actually to join help develop the genre yeah and and actually mm -hmm. bring give it impetus and, and and allow it to go forward and i think a little bit was some it was a technical aspect it would it would be like oh it's a lot for me to take in and learn but mm -hmm. even those ones now they've done it they're, they're kicking themselves they're like yeah. Why didn't I do this six months ago? Because they were scared. But it's like with anything new, you have to get used to it. And then maybe after your first one or two, you suddenly realise, oh, this is a thing. So I, even with photographers, my first couple were like, oh, suddenly I'm getting the raw pictures at the end and I, I can edit them as if I had been standing there. And then it yeah. suddenly clicked in my head. I think there was a belief that the photographers thought that they were devolving all responsibility for their images to yeah. the model. Yeah. And the model store, they didn't know enough mm. to actually produce the shoot on their own. Mm. And what both sides forgot and suddenly began to realise was that it needs a cooperation between the two. Mm -hmm. And once it clicked with people that one or the other wasn't going to become the significant half, it was still it was still the teamwork yeah. that, that was there on, on 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 every other kind of shoot that everybody started saying, yeah, okay. I can, I can work with this mm. because uh, I, I'm not devolved. I'm not losing my creativity. Yeah. I'm not losing my ability to organise a theme. If I want to, and some people, some particular photographers, love the fact that they like going to events. They like it all, yeah. all set up for them. They like it to be... I'm going to use a phrase, but it's a wrong phrase, but I don't know what phrase mm -hmm. uh, to use properly. It's handed to them on a plate. Yeah. And it's probably the wrong. It's probably a little bit derogatory that, but I apologise for that. But you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it's like the, all the lights and stuff has been set up for them. They just yeah. have to press the button. Yeah. And, and they've still got to be creative in pressing the button. They've mm. got to be in the right place, and they've yeah. got to t take the image that that's right. But they don't have to worry about everything else. And that's what events mm. sort of give people. I mean, you can see it in the in the type of remote shoots that happen. I mean, you go to, to, to Chris and Amy down in Plymouth, they offer a, a very fantastic... I mean, some of the images I've seen coming out of that are absolutely amazing. But on a personal level, would I do them shoot? 
with respect, no, I wouldn't because it doesn't fit in with the way that I want to do it. Yeah, and it's your choice. So that's my choice. Yeah. It's like everything else. Do I, what kind of what kind of model photography do I want to take? Well, it's, it's my choice. I don't have to take what go into one particular genre just because people think I should. Mm-hmm. I choose where I want to go. If I didn't want to shoot art nude, I wouldn't shoot art nude. If I didn't want to shoot, when I, mean, I do, I did, will do when it when it when it starts up again. Mm. I, I did quite a lot of shibari work. Yeah. Now, sort a lot for a lot of people, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. And it and it's a difficult concept. I mean, I, I was very very anti to it mm. until you tried Scarlett, it. Yeah. Until Scarlett wrote, actually said, look, when she asked me to come on a workshop, I have, I actually said to her, no, I'm really anti it i'm not happy with it i'm very very uncomfortable all the all the resistance walls went up and she said fine but why are you knocking it when you've not tried it Mm. you don't know come and find out what it's all about and if you don't like it then then Mm. you're saying it from a place of knowledge yeah not from a place of no knowledge and it's the same with remotes it's like if you've not tried it you can't say you don't like it so maybe you do one and you never do it again because you don't like it fair play yeah cut off you tried it yeah, you you, you you honestly then come back and say I don't like it. Well, then fine, yeah. that's yeah. That, that's up to you. But don't then sit on the sidelines knocking everybody else, saying you, you're a lesser person for doing remotes mm. than doing it in person because it's mm. it's all the it, it's the same creative process at yeah. the end of the day. So uh, the last question I'm going to ask you is: Where can people see the results of your remote shoot? Is there a website they can go to? Yeah, the, the bulk of my work I, I, I tend to publish as, as a window, and it's the easiest place to do it, is on Purpleport, and it's under Gary Mack Photography. Okay, but that's, so, the, 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 that's the best place where they can see your remote work? Oh, yeah, all the remote work are in individual. When they go on to my, my port, mm-hmm. there's the general photographs at the beginning, as everybody's been on Purpleport, no, then there's the albums underneath. I have an album for each remote shoot that I've done, and mm-hmm. I have the latest shoot at the top of the album tree. So you don't have to scroll right down to the bottom of the, mm-hmm. the profile. Once you get to the bottom of the photographs, the albums, the first albums you come across are the latest albums. Cool. Cheers for doing the podcast, Gary. Um, great answers and um, look forward to seeing more of your work as you shoot more remote photography. It's, it's actually been a, a great, however long this conversation turns out, to be on the podcast. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to uh, give my opinions on stuff. Well, cheers for doing the uh, podcast, Gary. It's like being very inform- informative. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, let's try that again. <laughs> when we get back to shooting in person, do you think it's going to be around as an elephant? An elephant?